Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to talk to you about charging electric vehicles. Uh, I get quite, asked quite a lot uh, about how this and there's a bit of confusion over here. So I uh, thought we'd do a quick video today. We're going to try and keep it really simple uh, and just give you some of the information that you need. If you like this type of video, pop in the comments box below if you want to see some more details. Uh, and we're going to do probably a bit more an in-depth one uh, and look at different charging options. But for today, I'm just going to explain the basics uh, to give you an idea because there's a bit of misinformation out there sometimes with what you can and can't do and what's the best way uh, for it's in there. So I've got an ID buzz uh, behind me here. Um, so obviously charging wise, uh, you buy one of these, you take it home. For most people, charging at home is the way uh, forward for these. It's the cheapest option uh, and it is the best option. So probably 90% of people charge at home overnight and use it during the day. Uh, and to do that, obviously you need a charger installed at home, uh, which has to be wired into your house uh, to do that. And that gives obviously a good enough current then to, uh, to charge the vehicle up overnight. Now, if you're buying something like an ID bus, for example, at the moment, uh, you do actually, there's an option, you get a free charger, uh, which looks like this. So you can have one of these installed in your house uh, on the standard installation free of charge. That's a deal that's on the current ID bus uh, as we speak at the moment. Uh, obviously, if you're buying any electric vehicle, uh, this is something that, you know, from a dealer's perspective, we can organize uh, this for you to make it nice and simple to just come in and fit it at your home. Obviously, if you're buying a used one, there's a cost involved. As I say, if it's a new one you're buying, uh, there isn't at the moment, it's just a deal they're doing. Uh, if you're looking at a car, for example, within the ID range of the ones that's on there, uh, obviously speak to whoever you're getting your, your vehicle off that's in there. So uh, essentially, what this does is connected to your house and then obviously the electric, I did say this video is gonna be simple, goes down the line here and goes into the vehicle. Um, and this is what the port in the vehicle actually looks like. So I will just pack up this. So for most people, this, this top section is what you're used to. Uh, that's in here that you'll see a lot. Uh, this is the plug which is on the, the other end of the charger. Um, and this is a standard charging uh, cable for AC charging. And that's the key to, to realize from here. So for AC charging, which is what you have at home, uh, AC alternative current uh, that's in there as well. And this is the charger you get for that. Uh, on here as well, there is a little thing to pull off. So if I pull this away, you'll notice there's two uh, additional ones, big ones that's down here as well. And that will be for a charger which charges via DC. Um, you won't have one of those at home. Uh, nobody will have a DC one at home because they're very expensive uh, to have them. We have one, all of our do, we have one uh, here at the dealership because those DC lets it charge very, very quickly. Uh, and I often get asked why is that the case? So the battery on the vehicle actually stores it in direct current. So that's what's actually the, in the battery. So when you're plugging it in and the charger itself is putting that straight in, that goes straight from the charger straight into that battery. So it's charging the battery direct from the big charger, which is uh, doing it from on there. If you're plugging it in at home or via uh, this type of socket, for example, you're charging it via AC, so alternating current, um, and not getting technical about what the differences are between the two, but essentially what this is doing is it's putting power to the onboard charger. So in the vehicle, there is a charger in the vehicle, um, and that charger then is actually gonna take this power and convert it to DC and then that will then charge the battery uh, and that's an important thing and that's where we get a lot of misconceptions over the uh, the differences why there are two different ones that's on there as well and a lot of people ask because there's different charging ones you get so if you've got one of these at home it's probably around seven kilowatts something like that uh, as a charge maximum charge capabilities uh, that you've got from your home that's there uh, that comes out um, and obviously then that obviously can charge your vehicle at that rate or lower uh, and that will depend on what you've got going on in your house so if you've got other things in your house going on at the same time obviously then that will be reduced uh, because obviously it will load the balance as they say so it'll it'll take whatever power it needs just for that and, and so you're not left elsewhere one of the reasons why you pretty much charge up at night because not a lot else is happening uh, at night when it uh, when it charges from there so that goes into the battery and charges it up uh, using it that but it's the actual vehicle itself is converting it and putting that into the battery and storing it from there you'll see for example sometimes you'll see it'll say 22 kilowatts on an ac charger the reason it is 22 kilowatts is because that will be connected to a three-phase supply and again getting technical now so ignore that but it just means there's more it has got more power because we're a commercial building we have a three-phase supply here so ours AC ones are three phase. I tend to find when I'm using that and charging a bus, for example, I'm getting about 10 kilowatts 
uh, of power going into that vehicle. So it's a lot more than it would be on one of these standard ones from home, uh, and it does charge the vehicle a lot quicker on there. But again, it's limited to how much this can actually charge because it's all based on what this charger can actually do at home. Uh, so charging between those and at home, not a huge amount of difference, and obviously generally you're charging up overnight. I hope that kind of makes sense to you, the differences between it in a very simplistic terms. So if you're charging at home, or again, you can do these, there are charges around which are AC charges. Obviously you're gonna have this type of connection that's on here. Uh, AC charging is gonna take a lot, lot longer than DC charging. And that's because it's going from here, being converted on board, and then put into the battery uh, below, where if you're having it on a DC charger, which we'll go and have a look at now, so we've got DC charger around the back, different type of connector uh, that's on that on the DC charger, that's going directly to the battery, and that's why it's a lot, lot faster. Uh, also those DC chargers, because they're more commercial, they're a bigger unit, they can charge at a lot higher rate. Um, you can get them up to, I think, I think maximum now something like 350 kilowatts, uh, that you can do it again, but again, Depending on the vehicle you've got, there is a limit to how quick your vehicles can charge even on DC power. Uh, so for example, if you're looking at something like a Buzz, for example, I think it's something like 170 kilowatts is the maximum rate it can charge at. So really, if you're looking around for a charger, you probably want one that's 150 kilowatt max, something like that, for example. But you tend to find those DC chargers, wherever it is you're going to, We'll just have an array and have well this can charge up to x and y but you will find with the dc charges on a public network there will be difference in the cost per kilowatt that you're paying uh, so obviously the faster or the bigger the dc charger uh, uh, those public stations is the more you're going to pay um, which is all right because in fairness it's a bigger unit probably cost the installer more money whoever's got it so uh, hence the reason why they probably charge a little bit more for it but bearing in mind you might not necessarily get the benefits of paying for that extra one uh, and you might find, for example, that you want something a little bit less. Uh, so this is our DC charger here at Liverpool. Uh, this particular one is a 25 kilowatt uh, DC charger. We've got one on our Wrexham branch, for example, that's a 40 kilowatt DC charger. Uh, about the same, but it's the other way around on the wall. Uh, this is the type of socket that you get. So uh, you'll see, obviously, it's the same size here, but it's got less pins in the top. But the big pins are the ones at the bottom here, which is to do with the DC charging. So as I said, this particular one that's on here, this is a 25 kilowatt charger that's here. So this will supercharge a buzz very, very quickly because it will charge directly to that battery. Um, but obviously this is 25 kilowatts. As I said, I've got one uh, at Wrexham that's a 40 kilowatt one, which not quite double, but, um, but near to that double. So it would actually effectively charge the vehicle quite quickly at the same time as well. But it's all about how much time you've actually got to do this. So as I said, these are the type of charges that you would use when you stopped at a service station or something like that, for example, and you'll find the charges like this size. It's from here right down to the floor and it's big. Uh, as I said, it could probably charge up to 350 kilowatts. Uh, a lot of them are kind of like 150 kilowatts, that kind of thing, uh, size wise to do it. And you plug it in, those pretty much be all, all the same. They always look like that. But I said, this is for when you need to charge. If we whip ourselves around quickly, so this is an AC charger uh, that's on here. I'm not going to unplug it because it's plugged into the vehicle that's in here at the moment. Uh, but you can see the normal lead that we've got into here, um, and that's obviously going in into the vehicle. And we tend to use these vehicles here. We tend to put these on overnight. Even at the dealership, this is our preferred method for charging these vehicles up. We prefer using them on, on the AC uh, power. I know it takes a lot longer and it might take overnight to charge one of these up fully that's there as well rather than being quickly on the other one uh, but it says that you know it's better for the batteries if it's done on the on these charges and let the charger for the vehicle uh, actually do that as well uh, and then obviously we use the other one when we need something charging quickly uh, and then obviously it can go which is what you do at home you know you charge up overnight and if you're going somewhere on a longer trip for example you need to stop somewhere and you can get out now it's worth mentioning as well as we hear a lot in the in the news and things like that and people are saying about you know charges you know whenever you go to one one's broken i've used these charges i haven't actually found one yet that's actually broken when i've arrived and there's lots of them popping up all of the time as well uh, i was at the nec yesterday um, and when i was there at the nec um, just as you as you drive in there's a whole new section of uh, charges that's in there which look like rapid charges it's there probably 20 odd 25 bays uh, there was only one vehicle actually in 
uh, the place where when I drove past charging up. So, uh, and that's literally just off the uh, off the motorway in Birmingham. So, uh, there's lots of places which are coming up now to enable you to actually do that. Uh, and when you do need to do that and you need to charge up on those, there's lots of companies that you can go to. So you can just pay as you go. So arrive, tap a card on, for example, on most of them, plug it in and charge up. That's generally the most expensive way to do it. You can look at things like, for example, We Charge, which is the Volkswagen uh, charge card, and they've got pay as you go. And they've also got uh, two different levels which you can pay a monthly fee for, and it gives you a slightly cheaper cheaper rate but as I said you need to be using them a lot really to pay anything more than, than a one-off uh, I mean me myself for example um, I don't have an electric vehicle at the moment it's something I'm considering but uh, if I do get one it'll only be occasionally that I would need to use a rapid charger uh, because that'd be you know if I was away for something or for example like if I went to the NEC uh, and that's right I'd probably get back there and back home with the NEC on a full charge anyway but I could stop for say 10 minutes grab a quick coffee uh, at the one at the NEC charge up and you know just put you know, another 20, 30% in, for example, probably only take like 15 minutes, if that, probably the time it would take me to grab a coffee from Starbucks next door and, 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 and off I go, give you an idea. And then finally, as an emergency, we do have a three pin plug. Uh, so you can get a charger, uh, we sell them from uh, at the dealership here. Uh, you can order it as, a, as from the factory with the vehicle as an additional one. So that would have a 13 amp plug, you have to plug that directly into a wall socket. Uh, you can't do it on an extension lead or anything like that, it won't generally work, and plug that into your vehicle. Uh, we actually use that for our showroom vehicle, so uh, when we've got electric vehicles in the showroom, um, rather than having to take them all out and move everything around, for example, we'll plug one in uh, into a 13 amp socket. It takes a long time. A bus, for example, the last one we charged that was in one of our showrooms, for example, uh, that was in there, I think it took 38 hours uh, to charge the whole thing up. Um, uh, from, from start to finish uh, on that 13 amp, uh, 13 amp plug. But it was there as an option that you can have in the vehicle if you're worried, if you were going to the friend's house or something like that, for example, you could say, oh, can I just plug this in to top it up overnight while you were down there as well? Uh, that would be less than what it would cost you on a supercharger. So that was a quick overview of the different charging methods that you can have uh, for an electric vehicle. Uh, obviously, I tried to keep that quite simple. Uh, so as I said, obviously, AC charging, which is you at home, uh, that goes in, converts it, puts it into the battery, and then your DC, which is the one where you're out and about, for example, and you plug in, charges directly to the battery, and that's the fastest way of charging. Uh, if you would like a more in-depth video, which looks a bit more at the uh, differences between that and how much you actually do put in and what you get back out, because uh, there are losses, etc., that's in there as well, uh, ask us in the comments box below. We will do that if it's something you'd be interested in seeing. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, give us a thumbs up, give us a like. Uh, if you don't subscribe, as always, subscribe. It helps the channel out, and we'll see you next time.